Flamenco, uh, first of all, there's not very many of us out here doing this. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of the uh, uh, original concert flamenco guitarists uh, who is uh, an American. And yeah. so I, like like a lot of guys back in the uh, back in the 60s or, you know, 70s, we got cooked by flamenco music, and uh, I happened to uh, have kind of a knack for it. I'd been a rock and roll guitarist, played a little blues, a little jazz, you know, a little country. You, you, you Tulsa, look, grew up you look in Tulsa. like you could be an Elvis personator. I could be. Could be. <laughs> I was a big Elvis fan. A uh, fan of all kinds of music uh, that was uh, from the 50s and 60s, but I got, got interested in flamenco from a recording that I heard of Carlos Montoya. My mom brought a record home from the grocery store in Minnesota on a fishing Records. trip. How's that? Records. Old? We're talking about the one that used to go round round with a needle on it. Yeah. Hey, people, Mister, what the record? Some of you don't remember. <laughs> but we used to do that. I listened to that all summer. One summer, just drove everybody crazy trying to figure this stuff out on my, on my electric guitar. <laughs> on your electric guitar. Uh, drove everybody nuts on Wolf Lake, Minnesota. But anyway, so to make a long story short, I I, uh, I got back to Tulsa, sold my electric guitar. I knew I had to do this. You see, it, it was a major turning point in my life. This was like yeah. my, my wow moment. Like, this is what I'd been looking for. So I ended up um, getting records of Carlos Montoya and other flamenco guitars and trying to find out more about it. But there was no one in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who knew anything about it. So I was kind of on my own. People made fun of me, you know. Crazy kid thinks he's going to be a gypsy. Stupidest thing I ever heard of, you know. They, they'd stop me on the street. Hey, they did a story on me in the newspaper. They had a picture there, and the headline was... Tulsa has a goal. <laughs> I mean, this is news. And, <laughs> it is. Uh, somebody had a goal. Slow news day. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But they, uh, they thought it was still a little weird. I mean, you know, they, they just didn't think a guy from Oklahoma could be a flamenco guitarist. I didn't pay attention to him at all. I was operating from my heart. This is something I love to do. And I'd been told by my mom early on that if you find what you're good at and you find a way to do it so you love what you do, you're guaranteed success in life. Cool. Turns out, after many years of traveling around, going to study with Montoya in Spain, I did. I, I auditioned for him b backstage at the end of that year when I was in high school. Yeah. I just got my $15 pawn shop guitar and uh, <laughs> playing flamenco on it. And uh, so he invited me to come on to New York City after he heard me play. So I went on to New York City and studied with Carlos Montoya for a couple years off and on. That uh, must have been just fat. Had all those guys, Sabicas and Mario yeah. Scudero and all those guys. And then I played after two years of working really hard, 8 to 10 hours a day. Maybe sometimes 12 hours a day I practice. I uh, played with flamenco dancers and all that uh, in New York City. And then I played in Carnegie Hall after two years. Cool. Subsequently, I made about nine different trips over to Spain after I went to the Army. And I was in Vietnam. You got a full years. full scholarship on here. Got a Fulbright. Yeah, that's right. You gave me that Fulbright scholarship. Fulbright that was my scholarship first, is, first trip to Spain. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, uh, I guess the only one they ever did for, for flamenco guitar. So naturally, I was very uh, grateful for that. Traveled all over Spain. And, Kind of immersed myself in the culture with the wisdom of those old Spanish gypsy guitars, and really got into the culture and lived it. Really lived now the you've life. Played Carnegie Hall, the Washington Center, all all sorts of places. I've been I've been around the world, about 15 countries. I played. I played in all major major universities throughout the United States, and uh, still pretty much uh, do most of my performing in the U.S. Still right now, and uh, yeah. a lot of. Uh, of uh, performances for college. You've been to Switzerland. I played a concert in Switzerland. Yeah, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah, that was a, that was a that was a cool one. I'll be telling some of those stories at the concert tomorrow night at six o'clock over at the Brett's Law Arena. And, now, uh, um, you toured for the U.S. State Department as a musical ambassador in Mexico. How was that? For you? Oh, that was incredible. I actually that was the beginning of it. I played for, in all the capital cities of Mexico, uh, the state, each state of Mexico, and. Uh, and this included, of course, the University of the Americas. But while I was on this tour, people started noticing what I was doing. And there's this guy from Oklahoma that plays real flamenco music and speaks fluent Spanish. And so they picked up on it and turned me into the ambassador. I went on down to all the Latin American countries, all the way down to Panama. I played concerts for the universities and uh, had a great time. Really uh, got some of my... Tell us about your uh, CD. Yeah, I got to the... They're, they're all, by the way, my website is just my name, RonaldRadford.com. Cool. So check out my uh, website, or you can just go Ronald Radford uh, Flamenco on YouTube, and you can hear a dozen or so of these hot uh, videos that are up now. 
Uh, but the, the, the audio track for a lot of those little uh, slideshow videos is from this CD called Viva Flamenco. And it's available. You can order it directly on my website, again, RonaldRadford.com. The DVD was recorded a couple years ago. It was a live concert. It was recorded, you know, uh, with five cameras. And, you know, really professional deal. Uh, me telling all my stories, you know, the whole nine yards. And that DVD is available also through my website. You can order these through major stores as well, but most people just get it directly from the website. Yeah. So, now, uh, before I let you go, uh, you told a little bit of story up there that I think tugged at a lot of people's heartstrings, mine, and being a, a media person. This, uh, the impact of Sam Brownback and people basically getting rid of the arts, trying to get rid of the arts. In They're not trying to get rid of the arts. They were just running scared. They were just running scared of a short budget. And uh, they're the kind of people who don't necessarily value either the cultural enrichment and preservation of our culture and the, the values of our civilization that are contained in the arts. They're more concerned about the bottom line. And so consequently, they cut uh, $700,000 out of the state budget. But in doing so, they, they immediately cut about $1.2 million from National Endowment that would have been a part of the funding I would have gotten to play here, yeah. as well as uh, about $9 million worth of other economic activity generated by that. So he really shot the state of Kansas in the foot by doing that. I know it's politically uh, popular to cut the arcs and things that they think are unnecessary, but you wouldn't think of, uh, of cutting grocery stores or truckers or anything like that because the arts are an essential part of the business climate in Kansas. So I was really sorry to see that. That's why I came out to uh, play these concerts anyway. i got ten cities I'm doing throughout the state of uh, Kansas right now. Six weeks of touring. And except for one of them, Iola, they came up with some money for me. But the rest of them, uh, economy is so bad, funding was cut. They didn't have any money. I'm, I'm going to do the shows anyway. Cool stuff. So, well, thanks. That's what I do. I'm an artist. I play. I create <laughs> well, magic. Thanks, thanks for being out here, sir. My pleasure. Hey, and, thank uh, you. How do we find you on the internet? RonaldRadford.com. That'll work. See you there.